Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. I am Susan Delahousse. I'm the Senior Career and Professional Development Advisor for SOPA. And today we're going to be talking about how to make your resume stand out, talk about cover letters, and we'll dive into a few other things that correlate with those topics. So a little bit about me. I was a recruiter for over 10 years for big law firms in New York City and a big tech company here in New Orleans. So I was the person writing the job postings, receiving the resumes, reading the cover letters, passing them on to hiring managers, doing screen interviews, calling candidates in for interviews, and coordinating, coordinating their hiring process. So if you have any, have any questions about how to uh, correspond with a recruiter and all that, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or ask questions today. So I will start off talking about resumes and um, my favorite topic, and I'll show you mine. Of course, I have a bunch of different versions, but you know, right now, what you all really need is just a great one-page resume. And I'll talk about the different types of resumes. This is a very plain, simple one, a corporate one, if you're applying to corporate positions. And the most important thing about a resume to make it stand out is to make it perfect. Um, there's been situations that I've been in, we'll just start at the beginning where let's say my name's Susan, but I go by the name Susie. And but I put on all of my correspondence, Susan, and then I get into the interview and I'm like, hi, my name's Susie. Well, everyone's confused. This document is not a legal document. It's not a driver's license. So if you do go by a different name, put it on there and include that. Whatever you want to be called, make sure you're letting them know that. Another thing that I have uh, experienced with emails on resumes, I've had some candidates put two email addresses on their resume and, and then the recruiter's confused. I'm like, which email address should I be using? You want to use your, the email address that you check the most often. I had a candidate, a 4.0 law student. I was trying to get in touch with them to hire, to set up interviews with them. And they replied to me, oh, I'm so sorry. I haven't gotten back to you. I never checked this email address. And I was thinking, why would you put it on here? Things like that. And I know y'all are going to think I'm making this up, but I also had a candidate who had their phone number incorrect on their resume. I was trying to get in touch with them. Double check everything. And it is something that's a little bit harder to look at when it's your own material. So make sure you meet with a career advisor. If you have someone in your family who can help you or a friend, it's always good to have someone look over it for mistakes. Uh, a big trend in resumes is just to include your city and state. If you're applying for a remote position, it doesn't really matter if you put your city and state on there, but we no, no, no longer need your full address on there. People don't need to come to your house. They don't need to Google where you live. You can provide that information. It's more of a security issue, actually, and you can provide that information if you do get hired and they need that information for payroll, taxes, tax purposes. So city and state is great. And hyperlinks are also um, nice for a recruiter. I have a link here that would take you directly to my LinkedIn. If you have, if you're in our media and design program and you have a link to a portfolio, you could also add that here. It could just be another hyperlink. Um, just simple, simply to take you to a portfolio. Also, um, sometimes people, if you have been published, 
they put links to a publication in their resume, anything that makes it easier on the recruiter. When I was a recruiter, we did have probably a three-page checklist that we had to go through before hiring a candidate. And one of those sections on the checklist was to look at their social media. So we would go to their LinkedIn and their Instagram and their Facebook. And when you are getting hired, you are representative of a company. And so they are looking at all those things. Make sure those things are hidden. If you don't want anyone to see your Instagram or your Facebook, um, obviously you would want LinkedIn to for everyone to be able to see it. Uh, at least I do. And um, because it is a professional networking site and a portfolio could be hyperlinked on here, which would be great. So just be aware that recruiters are looking at your social media for sure. And also it just makes it easier for them. You want to make everything easier for a recruiter because they have such limited time and they're getting inundated with tons of resumes. And I will tell you the majority of resumes that a recruiter receives are not the right fit for the job. So even if it says on Indeed that 150 people have already replied, I do believe probably 95% of those people do not meet the qualifications. So still apply. I know it can look daunting. And so just make sure everything's correct. If you go by a nickname, put that on there. Going down, I have my experience up at the top. It's whatever you're currently doing. If you are currently in school, you would move your education up to the top, even if you're working. Um, so I would move education up to the top here because it is the most relevant and everything goes in order of most recent to least recent, your education and your experience. You really wanna make sure everything is consistent on your resume. A recruiter is scanning a resume. They're looking at where you work, where you've lived, they're not reading the entire bullets. I'm sorry. I know you work hard on these, but a recruiter is not going to read your entire resume. Their eyes are going to skim over it. And where you what you want them to see is where you've worked, your titles. I like having the dates over here. I know a lot of people right align them. To me, it looks a little messy because it doesn't always line up perfectly. So I like to have the dates on the left side. It also makes it easier for the recruiter to skim the resume if everything's over here on the left instead of their eyes shifting back and forth. So I have, as you will see, all of my jobs are where I have worked are bolded and I can send you all a resume template. City and state and then all of my positions are italicized and then my dates are not. Even down to the dash in between the dates, I want those to be consistent. There are short dashes and there are long dashes. So just look through your resume and just make sure they're all consistent. I also don't recommend periods at the end of bullets because bullets are not complete sentences. I take all the periods out at the end of bullets. Just anything that you can add on here, community service, interests, skills, all that goes down at the bottom. And you may have a two-page resume um, as your career grows, and that's okay. But it is always nice to have a one-page resume. And when you are playing with a resume, go and customize your margins because you can fit a lot more on here than you think you can if you go and play with these margins. And let's see.
we have someone who has raised their hand. Um, you all are welcome to pop in and ask a question. I think you have the ability to um hopefully to ask a question. Um and so here's margins and you can play with it um left and right, top and bottom to get everything to fit onto one page. And when you send out a resume, I want it to be clean. So that would be sending it in a PDF version. When you send it in a PDF version, it makes this hyperlink just one click and different uh, computers have, different people have different versions of Word so if you if someone doesn't have the latest version of Word and they're building their resume on a computer and they're sending it to someone who has the most updated version of Word, sometimes it can put it on two pages. It can change the format. If you send it in a PDF, you are guaranteed that it's all going to stay on one page. It's going to look exactly like you're sending it. And it's also going to... Um, it's just going to look crisper, cleaner, and no one can make changes to it. No one can accidentally open it and start typing in it. I always recommend you send your resumes, cover letters, any application materials, letters of recommendations, references, all in PDFs, just to make sure the formatting stays exactly as you see it. And... We have different types of resumes. And so this is, like I said, a very formal business resume. I can send you all, we have federal resumes. I can send you the template for if you're applying for a government job, they want a long resume with all of this information in it, how many hours per week, your salary. And then we also have for, you know, IT and our more creative majors, it's great to have a colorful resume if you're in a creative field. And this is someone, a student created this and I took her name out, but I liked the look of it. I thought it was clean. I thought it was attractive. And you can create resumes like this on Canva, or you can buy a template on Etsy. And it looks a lot different than mine. And that's just because I don't come from a creative background. I come from like a law firm background. When I did work for a tech company, I did see more colorful, creative resumes and we welcomed those. But if you're applying to be an accountant at Ernst & Young, you're probably not gonna use a template like this. And once again, it's all about Consistent consistency, keeping things in order, easy on the eyes, nice to read. Um, I thought this was a really cool section over here, the software skills. So if you have any questions about this, um, I will show you all Canva. And I know some of the students I've worked with have bought things on Etsy. Um, so I have a question. If if we're pursuing a dual degree and we're in two schools of Tulane, how should we format our resumes? So I would, let's go back to here. Um, so on here, I would keep just one title line here for Tulane University, New Orleans, Louisiana. And then underneath, I would put this. And then underneath that, italicize what else you are focusing on. And then anything else underneath related to Tulane University. 
it's very similar if let's say let's say i worked at gibson dunn and got up um let's say i started as the legal recruiting assistant and then i got promoted to the legal recruiting coordinator i would have the dates on here um march and then put the bullets under here you want to keep it in one section you don't have to make two different sections you'll just keep the name of the university folded add the other school that you're in here same with if you have had multiple positions at the same company you just add those under the same header and don't put any spacing in between it and i can always help you with that or we can have um you know any of the career counselors here at Tulane help with that. And let's see, we might have another question. I think that's it. Um, so for now, you all are welcome to type in questions along the way. And I will show you all. So my most important thing, which I think I've made clear, but I'll tell you again, is that your resume is just perfect with consistency. And it's the reason why is they cannot see you. It is a black and white piece of paper. It's your one shot, including if you do include a cover letter, that's you know, part of the package. But you want to make sure everything on here is consistent. I'll even look at my own resume and check and see errors from time to time. So it is good to go back and look over your resume and update things. Um, maybe you have a new interest, maybe you're volunteering somewhere new. So things change. I would maybe put a reminder in your calendar for every six months to go in and review, review your resume because things can definitely change. I wanna talk about cover letters. Cover letters are definitely something that, let's see, um, they're definitely something that students are curious about. And I want to make sure you all know that cover letters are something that I think are really easy. And so hopefully I will make this bit of a mystery easier for you all. Here on a cover letter, no matter what your resume looks like, if you have a standard resume, like I have a plain black and white one, federal resume, or more of a creative one with color, I want, I like it as a recruiter when cover letters match their resume, because then you can see, oh, this is the same candidate. So I would take the header from my resume and just copy and paste that into my cover letter. So it matches, the recruiter knows who they're dealing with, all their contact information, once again, is up at the top. Here, people are always asking, who do I, who do I address it to? And the recruiter really, they don't, they don't care if you say to whom it may concern, to your hiring manager. And what you don't want to do is guess. Now, some companies will do in their in their job description, they will give you steps to take as a bit of a test. They will say, number one, address your cover letter to Susan Deladuce. Number two, put the subject line as this. And typically, if you're sending an email to apply for a job, you want the subject line to be the title of the job. And then they'll throw in another th thing. Number three, um, attach a cover letter and a resume separately in PDF format. 
they are testing you to see if you can follow directions. So always, always, always read the entire job description. And if they have a one, two, three, four, do exactly as they ask, because it's an easy way to weed out candidates. If someone cannot follow directions, you probably don't want to hire them. For a cover letter, also, when I did at my previous roles, recruiting manager at a law firm here, I hired just attorneys. And then we had a director of HR who hired staff. So sometimes the attorneys would, you know, try to be detectives, get online, and they would think that they were supposed to send their materials to Connie Babb, who was the director of HR, but they were really supposed to address it to me. So I'd get a, a cover letter and it would say, dear Connie Babb, and I'd be so confused. I'm like, wait, is this person applying for an attorney position or a staff position? So don't try and guess because you might not guess the right person. And then you've you've confused the recruiter. In this first paragraph, so cover letters should just be one page long, um, not even a full page. And cover letters should not have bullets in it. Bullets are for your resume. And you do not have to explain your entire resume. You only want to include your most relevant experience to the job you are applying for. In the cover letter, you're going to want, uh, this is the way I do it. <laughs> when I'm applying for jobs, I save a sample cover letter on my, de on my desktop. In the first, par first sentence of the first paragraph, I always write, I would like to apply for X position at X company. And the reason why you want to write that is because oftentimes companies have over 20 positions open. So you need to tell them where you're, what you're applying for. Also, if they have multiple cities where you could possibly be applying for the same position, you put, put that also in there. When I was recruiting, I could have had a litigation associate position open in three or four different cities. So state that in your first paragraph. And I always highlight this because I know I have to change that first sentence every time I'm sending out a new cover letter. And as a recruiter, I've seen it so many times when I worked at Phelps Dunbar, a student, a law student would write to us and they'd say, I'd like to apply for a summer associate position at Jones Walker, which was our biggest competitor. And while we understand that mistakes happen, sometimes the attorneys would be like, no, no they've made a mistake. We're, we're not calling them in. And it's, it can be brutal out there, but they're, you're up against a lot of candidates. And if you do make a mistake, sometimes they're easy to um, not call you in for an interview if they're on the fence about whether or not. So I do not recommend that you include the name of the company that you're applying to or the title of the job anywhere else in the cover letter. It ups your chances for making a mistake. And the recruiter does not care if you mention the name of the job or the name of their company again. What they do care about is if you write the name of the company and the title of the job down in this last paragraph and you have left it as you're applying to a different company. So just be cognizant of that. Just try to eliminate, um, okay, I, I'm gonna go back and answer some questions. We have one question about the resumes. Um, where do we put awards? Awards would go if they are um, with your, on your resume, if you receive an award at Tulane, you're gonna wanna put that in your Tulane University section. If you have multiple awards and they are um, for different things, maybe at a company, at a school, at a, then you can put an award section down at the bottom where you can put skills, community service, interest, awards. So you can make that its own separate section 
or if you just have one, one award or two awards that you got at Tulane, or maybe an award you received at your undergrad, I would put that in the relevant section. So hopefully that answers your question, Devin. Um, and then someone asked, why is your resume more than one page? I think because I was editing it, it went on to, to, to more than one page, but I have a two page resume because I do have a longer work history and um, I didn't show you all that one, but as your career grows, you may have a two page resume at some point and it's okay. Um, it's, you know, I know the, the golden rule is a one page resume. And while you are uh, in school and um, if you're just an undergrad right now, then one page resume is definitely best. I've seen some people who are juniors go for like a two page resume and I'm like, no, you're not there yet. Um, but if you have years of experience under your belt, it's OK to have a two page resume if you want um if you want to have one and the company's not going to hold you against it. I have a one page and I have a two page and I kind of just decide based on the job, which one I'm going to send. And someone asked, where can we rewatch the Zoom meeting? I will send you all an email afterwards with a recording of the Zoom and I'll send you all the templates that we're discussing. All good questions. So back to the cover letter. Um, so in this first paragraph, it can be like three sentences. So I'd like to apply for this job at this company. In the second and third sentences, I'm from New Orleans. And so if I'm applying to a job in New Orleans, I say that. I say I was born and raised in New Orleans. I'm committed to, and I'm committed to living here in the area. It's something that's unique for me. Not everyone can say that they're from New Orleans. If you're from New York and you're going back to New York, um, you can say I was born and raised in New York. And so if you don't have a geographic tie to the area, it's okay. But if you do, definitely mention it. It's something as a recruiter, I liked to see when I was hiring people, if they put that in that first sentence, in that first paragraph. Also, if someone recommends you for a job, let's say um, we meet and I recommend you for a job at Idea Village, you can say my career counselor, Susan Delahousse, recommended me for this job. If I've talked to Idea Village and they know that I'm sending you as an interested candidate. So this is where you would put information that's like very um, specific to you because the recruiter probably going to read that first paragraph and they might skim over the second paragraph. Um, studies show that recruiters look at cover letters for five to seven seconds and I believe it. What you do want is all your punctuations correct, um, your grammar's correct. You can run it through ChatGPT. I know we're not supposed to use ChatGPT for school, but it is great to run it through and to check your grammar. And so this second paragraph is where you sell yourself. You highlight who you currently are. Currently, I'm studying information technology at Tulane University. While in school, I work full-time. Um, I'm in, I work in IT at Tulane or whatever. Um, so they know who you are, what your attributes are, and why you want the job. And if there's anything else on your resume that you can tie in that's relevant to why you should get this position, then mention it. If you received an online certification for something that's relevant, but you don't have to mention everything that you've ever done, especially if it's not relevant. So I was a career counselor 10 years ago at LSU Law School. And so when I applied for this job, I brought that up. Even though it was an older experience, it was relevant to this position. Obviously, recruiting was relevant. So I brought that up as well. But 
pick out in your resume what is relevant. If you took a class in something that's really relevant. Um, and also just, you know, highlight, I'm highly organized um, and give an example why, whatever your strong attributes are, put that in your cover letter. And this third paragraph can just be really simple. Thank you for your time and consideration. I hope to have the opportunity to meet with you to discuss my candidacy. The end. It just has to be something that's just nicely well written and tells the reader a little bit about yourself and just kind of sums up the highlights of your resume that are most pertinent to the job that you're applying for. So hopefully that um, that helps because I know people do get a little bit um, a little bit intimidated by a cover letter. Um, so someone asked at the top of the page for LinkedIn, do we link our link, link our LinkedIn profile? So yes. So right here, I would, um, some people do this. I mean, my last name is really long. So um, that doesn't fit, but you can do that and put your hyperlink to your LinkedIn like this. So I think that looks nice. Um, mine is really <laughs> mine is really long, so I just leave it as LinkedIn with the link. But um, that is how something popular that I see and I, I think it's, I think it's good looking. So you can do that. Um, someone asked in some cover letter examples, they often state that we should have four lines of information, including name of the person, where we're applying, the company name, the address, city, and zip. Do you recommend that you, we do this? So that would be something that's like up here. If like you were applying to you know, I'm just using the last law firm where I work, Phelps Dunbar, LLP, that's the address. And now street, street, whatever, um, New Orleans, Louisiana. And you can do that. It's just not necessary. Um, I mean, if they tell you to address it to someone, like I said, then you can put um you know you definitely want to put um you know if they did tell you to address it to a certain person definitely put it up there i mean that does look nice you can absolutely do that um it's just a personal preference so i think that's good looking yeah you can definitely do that if you want to add the name of the company where you're applying and their address, and then also if it's to a specific person. So just as long as it looks clean and attractive, um, I'm all for it. That does look nice. One more uh, document that I will show you and share with you is references, which is... Um, something that's similar to, it's gonna look a little bit, you know, so references, you do not need to include references in your resume. Um, you also do not need to provide references when applying for a job. You only need to um, provide references when they ask you for them. And usually, it's when they're about to give you the job. And so same thing I like to keep, I like to just have a one page document, put it as a PDF and list, they usually ask for three references. So this is something you could prepare, prepare in advance and have it ready to go. And references can be a professor, it can be, um, people you've worked with, 
And the thing about references is it does not have to be a former boss. My references just happen to be someone who was a partner at a law firm where I worked who was above me. Um, this one is someone who was who was my boss. And then this one was someone who was my equal. Um, we had the same title, we worked side by side. I've also used someone in the past who was below me. She was our front desk receptionist at LSU Law School. She's still there. She took over my job after I left. What you really want is someone who's going to say great things about you. It doesn't matter what their title was or if they're still at the company where you worked with them. It's just that they know you and they know your work ethics and typically recruiters call references because when I would call people to ask about candidates, I could just tell from the tone of their voice that if they really liked that person or not. So I would call and I would they'd pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm calling, you know, to get information on Kate Smith. We're interviewing her for a position. And if that person said, oh my God, Kate is awesome. I knew right away this this was a great candidate. And they are trending in the direction of emailing people to ask about candidates. I liked to call people. I liked to put it, it's harder to get in touch with references. People don't answer their phone. They don't recognize the number. So do give them a, a phone option to call these people and also an email address to reach out to them. I just did a reference for someone over email. And so just so you know, it doesn't have to be a boss. It could be someone who was your equal, someone who was even below you, just someone you know is going to say great things about you. And when I was applying for this job at Tulane, I texted my three references separately and because none of them know each other and said, I applied for this job, gave them the title at Tulane University. I really am interested in the position. I gave your name as a reference. Please be on the lookout for a phone call from a 504 number. Two of my references don't live in New Orleans. So they all texted me back and they're like, oh, you know, I talked to Vanessa and, you know, we had a great conversation. So because I started that text chain and gave them the heads up, they knew to expect a phone call and to check their voicemail and to also, you know, they just kindly let me know that the calls had been completed. So just something to keep in mind. And it's just another document to have prepared um, when if you have the time to get all your materials in order, it's it's a good thing. And I will send you all in the chat before we, before we go, but we're not going yet. Um, my contact information and my LinkedIn and a link to the career services portal and our SOPA career development page for any um, upcoming um, events. But I do want to mention, um, I do love LinkedIn and I do recommend that you all either have a great LinkedIn page or don't have one at all. Like it's better to have a, a solid, complete page than one that's halfway done. Um, so it's kind of an all or nothing here. Um, I create, I change this all the time, my LinkedIn background photo on Canva. We hosted professional headshots recently. I know Tulane hosts them all over campus often. So you will have opportunities. Um, but as a recruiter, like I said, we did check people, candidates, LinkedIn. And what you want to make sure mostly is that your experience matches your resume. So go back and forth. I don't put all my bullets on here. Some people do. I just, I feel like it looks cleaner without it. But just make sure your dates match your resume, just go through and 
edit and make sure everything matches. Update your education, sign up for LinkedIn Learning. Up and so when you go and update your resume, maybe every six months, make sure you're updating your LinkedIn. And I want to give you all a fun example. So I had a student I was working with two days ago, Monday. She's looking for a marketing job in uh, Covington. And then, so I told her, I'm like, okay, get on LinkedIn, you know, follow all these organizations in Covington. Yesterday morning, I pop on LinkedIn and I see a post for a marketing intern at the St. Tammany Chamber of Commerce, which is in Covington. So I immediately messaged her and emailed her and I was like, oh my God, look. But my point being is I told her to follow all these places and she did. And the next morning, an ex exact opportunity that she was looking for popped up on LinkedIn. So many companies are hosting their open positions. And hopefully I'll scroll down and get a good example. But I see jobs constantly and I repost. And so if you are connected to me, you will see, you can go to my activity section and see all the posts that I've done. And they're going to be about networking events locally and about um job opportunities. Some are going to be remote if you're not in New Orleans. And LinkedIn is free and it's great. It's a great way to find out about networking opportunities in your area. And then you can also network with people on LinkedIn. So just real quick, I'll show you, um, you know, the, the background that I had on that I have my upper banner. You know, you can just, you can create one on, um, on Canva easily. And, you know, just search for LinkedIn background photo and you can make one and it fits perfectly in the in this box up here and you can play with it change colors you can change it out once a week whatever you want to do you'll also see just to add a little bit of pop i added um some symbols in my header and i'll send you all the link to this uh website coolsymbol.com and it's got tons of different symbols that you can include in here which i just think is kind of fun and adds a little bit of color to your resume. Two more things, we have two more minutes. I always look for jobs on Indeed. Of course, we also have Handshake at Tulane for jobs. And I just like to set an alert so I don't have to get on here and check every day. If I was looking for a career counselor position in New Orleans, I would set an alert for that. And then I would be able to, you know, you can set it. They could send you updates every three days, every every week, whatever you're most interested in seeing or every day, you can play with the settings. Tulane even posts their jobs on here so you will see jobs at Tulane. Um, so I like Indeed. I feel like it's clean. It's easy to use. If you if you find a job on Indeed that you're interested in applying for, sometimes or all the time, it's better to go to the company website and see if there's a way to apply through the company website because those applications get to the recruiter quickly than them going and checking their Indeed account. So I do always recommend go to the company website, see if they have a careers page and apply that way. And lastly, if you're struggling with, with any writing of a cover letter, you need to shorten your cover letter after you've seen this webinar, you can always put it into here. I don't log into ChatGPT, but I do talk to it almost every day. And I ask it like, um, please rewrite this, please make this more professional. Even if someone emails you and you don't know how to reply, you can put the 
email in and say like, this is what I want to say. How should I reply to this very professionally and polite? Um, and it can just give you a lot of great ideas. So if you aren't using ChatGPT, I do kind of recommend you play around with it for job search help. And it can give you great ideas for things, but don't use it for school when your professors tell you not to use it. So that is my presentation for today. I will follow up with everyone via email and send you all a copy of the recording as soon as I receive it. I'll also send you links to everything that we discussed. So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn because I'm post posting jobs a lot. And also, if you want to get ideas for a LinkedIn profile, I do think it's always great to look at someone else's profile who you admire and just get ideas from there. So thank you all for participating and don't hesitate to reach out or follow up with any questions. Have a great day.